Hello, everybody. Zero Fossil Fuel. I would like to welcome you to what may very well be history in the making. Today is December 23rd at 6.36 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is the front of my Astron power supply. And I'm not sure how well you can see that. That meter right there is showing 5 amps. And the voltmeter is showing just under 13 volts. This is the shunt that I was using in my car to measure current going into the cell to be completely consistent with all tests. This meter right here is showing the millivolt drop across the shunt which translates to amps. So it is showing 5.0 amps going into the cell. This digital multimeter is showing the actual voltage across the terminals of the cell. Take you for a quick tour around that. These two leads run around the back and come up over the top and you can see connect directly to the wing nuts of the cell. So I'm not, I'm not seeing any uh, voltage drops, or I'm not producing any voltage drops, I'm not seeing what's actually being delivered to the cell. Here is the outlet to the cell. If you follow this tube around, this comes to the one-way check valve. It only allows gas to travel in this direction, down the tube. If you follow the tube around, you can see that there is gas being generated, and the motion that you see is a small amount of water that's trapped in the tube so that you can actually see the gas traveling up through the tube. Follow it up here, it comes into the top of the tall bubbler. I don't have, <clears throat> don't have any water in the bubbler yet, as you can see. There's nothing indicated by a fluid level indicator. The output of that loops back around over the top of the cell comes down and into a T-fitting right here. From the T-fitting comes around to my vacuum gauge. And I'll be showing you the actual vacuum readings shortly. But you are going to see this mark right here is 25 inches of mercury and the next division over that is 26 inches of mercury. You'll see the needle when the cell is producing under vacuum anywhere between 25 and 26 inches of mercury. Here we have the T-fitting again. It comes back up. And when I run the test, I will simply plug this hose onto the inlet to the vacuum pump. From the outlet of the vacuum pump, we run around the top here to the inlet of the second bubbler. This is the original bubbler that I had in my car. This is the shorty, or mini-me. The outlet of this bubbler comes around and into the base of the HHometer. This is the 1.5 liter HHometer. So when this is producing gas, it's just going to rise like that. The first test I'm going to conduct is going to be with the cell turned off. Now right now I am warming up the cell. It is producing gas. It's still quite cold. It's been running like this for a while. The first test that I'm going to run is to show the amount of leakage that I have in the system and it is very, very small. Uh, we'll make a timed measurement to show any leakage in the system from the amount of gas being pumped into the HHometer and we'll subtract those readings or that volume of gas from the final readings to get the actual gas production volume of the cell when it's, being, when it's actually under vacuum and producing that way. There will also be a test to show how much power it takes to produce X amount of HHO under normal conditions at atmospheric pressure and we'll use that as comparison. Okay, so with that, that's the, this is the complete test apparatus, 
and uh, I won't be doing any more close-ups. Hopefully, I'll be able to show you the vacuum gauge in a little in a little while. Let's see here. Knock this over. Well, I'll take care of that later for the next shot.